line isolator or line choke I mentioned it quite a few times in my videos and uh, it's very popular to try and get rid of the common mode currents that flow down your coax. I found a very easy way out in the field to find out whether your line isolator or your choke is working. You can do it in just a few seconds. Just let me show you how easy it is to check whether your line isolator is working, over what frequency is it working and if it will cure the problem. Let me show you why you need a, uh, an RF choke to get rid of the common mode currents. Let me, let me show you a piece of coax. Inside the piece of coax you've got a conductor and that would go to one side of your dipole and you also got the sheathing which goes to the other side of your dipole. So you've got RF flowing on the inner conductor and you've got RF flowing on the inner of the sheathing. But as RF flows on the surface of a conductor, not only is it flowing on the inside of the sheathing, it's also flowing on the outside of the sheath and it's almost like having a third conductor. This is our coax cable which we can control and we can do all sorts of wonderful things with it and plug it into the radio and so forth and it's connected to the radio. But this outer sheath is rather like something hanging from the aerial and that can cause all sorts of problems. It can radiate which affects the radiation pattern but in our particular concern is that it also sends RF onto the chassis of the radio. That can cause RF problems. And it also badly affects VSWR readings. VSWR readings can be a real problem if you've got common mode currents flowing there. We need to get rid of it. And that's why we need a common mode choke or a choke isolator, call it what you like. It stops that RF on the outer sheathing of the coax going into the VSWR meter and the transceiver. We need to block it, otherwise you'll run into all sorts of problems. Now you might say, well I don't need a choke because I've got a ballon. I've got a dipole there and you've got a ballon there which you're very happy with. Then you've got coax coming down. You say, well, I don't need a, 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 a common mode choke. I don't need an isolated choke because I've got a ballon up there. Wrong. No matter what that ballon does or how well that ballon is made, there will be RF from your antenna being picked up on the outside of the sheathing. So once again, you've got the third conductor with the VSWR problem and the transceiver problem where it affects the action of the ATU, you get RF on the chassis, etc, etc. So even though you may install a ballon on your antenna, you've still potentially got a problem. So you have your dipole there, you've got your ballon there, you've got your coax cable coming down to your transceiver. That is where you need the choke. You need that choke just before the antenna goes into either the ATU or the transceiver. And how do we make common mode choke or common, uh, common mode choke? Well, it's very easy actually. Let me show you one that I use all the time. It's simply a number of turns around a ferrite core. I use the 240-43 mix ferrite core, seems to work extremely well. There are other materials that work just as well. Now, how do you know whether it's working and how do you know how many turns to put on? It's actually very easy. Forget the maths, there's a very quick field test you can do and I'll show you how you do it. I've set up a simple demo here. At the moment, I've got a reasonable VSWR on 10 meters and 28 megahertz. And if I touch this, 
there's very little difference in the VSWR. This is what I call the touch test to check for whether you need a line isolator. And you see that when I touch the actual coax connection there, there's very little difference. So now I'm going to switch to the 40 meter or 7 megahertz band. Now we're on the 40 meter band, 7 megahertz, and you see you've got quite a high VSWR. But look what happens when I touch the shield in. How dramatic that change is. That proves to me that I need a line isolator. You can see the tremendous difference in the VSWR reading. And you can see why I always say that you should always use a line isolator when you're measuring VSWR. And the line isolator should go right at the point where the coax enters the meter. So I think that amplifies, I think that really demonstrates uh, how you can very quickly see whether you need a line isolator or not. So as you can see, it's a very simple test. It only takes a few seconds. You can, of course, do it with an SWR meter. Uh, always do it on fairly low power because if there is any voltage there, you don't want to get, burn your fingers, etc. So run low power around about five or 10 watts into the VSWR meter. Touch the connection to the VSWR meter on the antenna side. And if you see that VSWR change, it's a sure sign that you need to add a line isolator. And also, the other thing is that when you're adjusting the number of turns on the line isolator, you can adjust the number of turns and see the difference it makes. And you want enough turns on the line isolator so that there's virtually no change. And you'll find that you need more turns when you're checking the lower frequencies than the higher frequencies. And generally speaking, once you've got enough turns to tackle the low frequencies, the high frequencies are probably okay and probably stable. So I hope you found that useful. It's quite an interesting test. And as usual, thank you for supporting this channel. Thank you for supporting Waters and Stanton. And we're always happy to help you. Give our guys a ring uh, at Milton Keynes if you've got any questions and they'll be more than happy to answer. In the meantime, you enjoy ham radio. Take care. See you as usual in the next video. Bye for now.